Subo, it's great to be here with you at the Nokia booth at MWC. Talk to me a little bit, I mean, I don't want to say greenwashing is a thing, but it is. So talk to me about what sustainability really means for Nokia. Thanks for having me here, Dan. I really appreciate the opportunity. Sustainability is core to Nokia's business strategy, our technology strategy, and our operations. So the way we look at sustainability is what can it do for our customers in terms of improving our innovations, our value propositions in our products, what can it do for our suppliers through a better responsible supply chain, and what can it do for our shareholders through minimizing the risks that our shareholders are exposed to. So, obviously you serve a lot of CSPs. Talk to me for a brief second about the role that CSPs have in this dynamic when it comes to sustainability. There are two parts to the role of CSPs. The information and communication technology industries in which the CSPs are part of has a huge footprint in the emissions of the networks. 2% of world's emissions and 5% of electricity are consumed by the CSPs collectively around the world. This is an area where Nokia has been working for, I would say, decades in terms of making sure that as radio network technology evolves from 2G to 3G to 4G to 5G and in the next generation of 6G, we are being able to beat the growth of network capacity uh, to the growth of the, uh, the energy demands in the network. Uh, we have had silicon uh, chipset innovation, we had software innovation, powered today by a lot of AI, as well as system and architecture innovation. We are doubling down on that path to make sure that our scope three emissions and the, the CSP's network emissions are at the lowest as possible. What I would also highlight is the CSP network, the telecom network also has a handprint impact on many other industries. So think about the network impacts on transportation sector, power utilities, ports, mines. These sectors are some of the biggest emitting sectors in the world. So what the telecom networks can do is not just about the telco networks that are in our mobile devices or in IoT devices, but the transformational impact in, say, clean energy transformation in oil and gas industry, uh, uh, sustainable transportation in the aviation industry or the ports or the, or the logistics industry. So I'm very excited about the opportunity of Nokia being able to cater to telco industry to build sustainable networks, but also to these other industries including, of course, increasingly the data center industry to build sustainable networks. So, I heard you kind of say that Nokia is working to outpace the rising consumption of energy, and this is probably going to become more acute with AI in the picture now. So, talk to me about how this, this effort, this sustainability effort, impacts the way you design your products. What goes into that thought process? What kind of products does it impact? As I said, sustainability is built into company's strategy. It really means breaking it down to every employee of Nokia about how they can contribute. So our smart R&D engineers in, who are looking at designing these products are building in what is called design for environment in the design principles. They look at what's the best silicon design they can do, the chipset design. They're looking at what's the best software architecture that can help doing a lot of the autonomous operations using AI. You know, in, in Mobile World Congress, for example, we are looking at, you know, at, at uh, our partner Google's booth, we have a, a AI-powered new uh, platform which is showing how consumers can, on their Android device, uh, look at better, can you know, a, a visibility of the energy consumption of their uh, applications. Here at uh, Nokia booth, we are looking at what's the best energy efficient uh, base stations we can bring. We are showing how the telco operators can monetize their energy asset with uh, virtual power plants and things like that. So there is a there is a lot of product innovation that that has gone in across our radio, optical, IP products, and as well as baseband products. What what things are also increasingly evolving is beyond the product innovation, it's also about how you manufacture these products, how you manage your supply chain. So we have a, a, a pretty steep target of, um, you know, for our own factories as well as our final assembly suppliers to get to complete decarbonization by end of this decade. We have also strong targets. We want to reduce 73% of our logistics emission by 2030. We are working very hard. Nokia has operations in 120 countries. We are working very hard in across these countries, the supply chain networks and how to reduce those logistics emission. So in my view, telco networks, enterprise networks, data center networks, all of these things require strong innovation in product design. Our new you know, product evolution in the optical area for data center networking, including our recent acquisition of Infinera, 
all of those things need to be put under this, this banner. And at the same time, how we run operations in logistics and manufacturing, all of those things coming together to help contribute our net zero roadmap, which is by 2040. So you beat me to my question about your net zero roadmap. So I'll leave you with one simple lightning round question. Are you going to hit that goal? We will work the hardest we can to make to that goal, not only within Nokia, but also with our suppliers and our customers. All I can tell you is this is core to Nokia's uh, value proposition. This is core to how our employees design and operate. And um, we have a very strong governance year by year, not waking up in 2039 about this. And we are working hard to uh, make sure we are on the right track to that goal. Well, we will keep track of your progress. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for the opportunity, Diana.